can see. I choose to believe in great things. Well, let's take it up and sing, I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things in my life. In my life, you do great things. In my home, you do great things. All I choose to believe in great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. In my life. In my life. You do great things. In my home. I choose to believe in great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things in my life. In my life, you do great. home, you do great things, all around, you do great things, eyes haven't seen, eyes haven't seen, I choose to believe in great things. Come on, let's get into it. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great 
things, great things, great things in my life, in my life, you do great things in my home, in my home, you do great things all around, all around. I choose to believe. Eyes have not seen. I choose to believe. Eyes have not seen. I choose to believe in great things. Hallelujah. 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 God, we exalt you in this place. We bless you. We magnify you and lift you up. The Bible declares that I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make it boast in the Lord. The humble shall, shall hear of it and be glad. So, Lord God, despite the times we are in, it is our purpose to praise you. Yes. Despite what we are facing, God, it is our purpose to lift you up. Yes, despite what it is yes. that we're going through right now, Lord God, we just hold to your unchanging yes, hand, Lord, Lord God, because yes. we know that there is no failure in you. So, God, we come into the sanctuary. We come online this morning to bless you and to praise you for the great God yes, that you are. Yes. God, come into our presence, wherever we may be, that we may feel you, Lord God, mm. that we may hear your voice. Let us feel your touch, Lord God. Let us smell your scent this morning mm, my God. as we offer this praise and this worship unto you. God, we love you. God, we praise you and we exalt you. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I just want to praise you.
to our viewing audience. We're so very glad to have you on today. We're broadcasting live on Facebook so we can have church even though you can't come to the sanctuary. So we welcome you. This is our broadcast from our uh, illustrious and wonderful sanctuary. Amen. So very glad to have you with us today, viewing with us online. Just a few announcements for our members and friends of Craig Memorial. Uh, there will be no share food program orders for the month of April. Also, we have canceled our Good Friday service. I know you are all looking forward to it, but we'll be unable to have good service on Friday. On Good Friday. The church anniversary will also be celebrated at a later time. We know this is 76 years in ministry for the Craig Memorial Community Church, and we will have that celebration uh, at a future date. At this particular time, all church activities have been canceled until further notice, which includes fellowship hall rentals and the like. Uh, we do apologize, but due to the coronavirus outbreak, uh, we can only have gatherings of 10 or more people, so uh, hopefully we'll have another day when you have your event. Uh, so also to the members and friends, uh, your tithes and offerings will greatly be appreciated and we will very much like for you to be able to send those in by mail. Uh, you can mail them to our church, 5305 Farmingdale Place. Also, you can call our fine chairman of our finance ministry, Brother Fred Smith, and you can also give on that way as well. Uh, we'd like to extend our condolences to Cherie Robertson in the loss of her father-in-law, uh, pray her strength in the Lord that uh, at this time of bereavement uh, that the family will be comforted by the Lord. Amen. Those are all the announcements that we have for our regular members and friends. Uh, we are so very glad that you are joining in with us. Again, thank you so much. Uh, for your loving kindness, your tender mercy, and your generosity at this time, because even though they give you a slight reprieve, um, bills are still due. Amen. So your charitable contributions are welcome. Also, please keep in mind of the, uh, the county executive and the governor has put in certain things in place for you to stay at home and keep a safe social distance. If you are out and about, please wash your hands frequently and avoid touching your face. Amen. So we want to be able to curb the spread of the virus. Amen. That's all the announcements that we have for today. Uh, we're going to get right into the word of God for today because there is a word from the Lord. And we appreciate God because even at this time of self-quarantine, he still speaks. Even at this time where we can't get out but the word of God is resident and the spirit of God can come into the place where we are. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, uh, your uh, cell phone handy or uh, your old rustic Bible that you keep by your bedside, amen. You could turn to Psalm 91. I'll be reading for your hearing verses 1 through verse number 3. Amen. I, we normally say when you have it, say amen so I can hear you saying not yet. Amen. 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 So we want to go to Psalm 91, uh, verses 1 through 3 in the New International Version of the Bible. It reads as follows, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for an opportunity that's granted us uh, to come over the airwaves on today. Bless your word, God, and bless those who hear it. They may be encouraged at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd just like to use a brief title for today, The Safest Place to Be. The Safest Place to Be. Uh, where do we go when we want to feel safe? 
Well, I was thinking about this as I was preparing the message for today, and I thought it was funny now, but it wasn't funny when I was a child. Uh, I had the unfortunate opportunity to look at the movie Terror in the Wax Museum. At the movie Terror in the Wax Museum, there was this wax figure going around killing everyone. And I always thought he was behind me when it was time for me to go to bed. So whenever I would leave the bathroom, I would run to my bedroom, and I would pull the covers up over my head, because when the covers were over my head, I felt safe. It's funny now, I look back at it, but uh, where do we go when we want to feel safe? Well, at that particular time, safety was under the covers. And if you've ever been a little kid in the United States of America or anywhere else, somehow your covers had magic powers to keep you safe from harm. And then after a while, you think about it as a child, safety to you was in your mother or father's arms. And then it was your covers, amen. A short time later, it may be a group of friends that you uh, had that would protect you if you were with another group or that was antagonistic or something of that nature. As long as you had your friends, you were safe. Uh, maybe later on when you went to college or you got your high school diploma, that diploma or that degree in a lucrative field made you feel safe. Afterwards, maybe it was a relationship, a family, and even now it's an alarm system that you set every night that makes you feel safe. It was a company that you worked for and the contracts that it had for me that made me feel safe because as long as we had contracts, as long as we had lucrative business, I thought I was safe. But, be, but as time goes on, you begin to look at these things and find out they're not as safe as you thought they were. The places where we deem safe over time, uh, they were not safe or as safe as we thought. It was the car, the house, the family, the alarm system, the job, the career, the neighborhood, the friends, the church family, and all these things we feel safe. But when we get old, we're too old to jump into our parents' arms, amen. Sometimes they, they need to jump into our arms, but we're too old to jump into our parents' arms. Cars get repossessed, houses get foreclosed on, jobs are lost, careers are ruined, family and friends abandon you, friends leave, and calendars of engagement seem to get canceled. So where do we go to feel safe? And now due to the coronavirus, we have self-quarantine and we take our vitamins, we stay at home, we obey the shelter in place and stay at home orders. And in this, we feel a degree of safety. However, there is no safer place than in our homes as we feel amongst our loved ones, but there is a safer place and than an alarm system. There is a safer place than your home. There is a safer place than staying in a shelter, shelter in place order. There is a safer place than being six feet away from everyone and sneezing into your arms and washing your hands so frequently they turn ashy. Amen. As we look at the book of Genesis chapter 6 and 7, we see that when God made man, he was grieved. God was grieved because he made man, because man, the thoughts in his mind and his heart were evil continuously. And because of this, he said he was going to wipe out man from the earth. But he found favor in Noah and his family and decided to spare them for the oncoming wrath. And he instructed Noah to build an ark for the animals and his family. He took the clean animals, a certain number of clean animals, and two of the unclean animals. He put them in the ark, and they were completely safe. It never rained, but now the rain started for 40 days and 40 nights, and everyone was banging on the door to get in, but unfortunately, God sealed them in, and they were completely safe, but all everything else was lost. Everything outside the ark was lost. Every animal that was not spared was lost. But the only safe place was in the ark. But if you really think about it, if you've ever been to the zoo or you've ever been uh, with a large group of animals, you know animals make a lot of noise. Animals have droppings that smell horrible. Animals are loud. They're, they're predatory. Animals, they get into confusion like us. They get into arguments. You can imagine brother and sister-in-law and everybody getting into a little bit of tiff because they were trapped in this ark for 150 days. You can imagine there was some difficulty in their relationships. But no matter how difficult the ark was, it still was the safest place to be. 
To give you another example, we turn to the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 23, where God was going to send the, the, the destroyer, or some regard it as a death angel, through the town, and everyone was to take some hyssop, dip it in lamb's blood, and put it on their doorpost. So that when the, when the destroyer came through the town, it would pass over your household if you had blood on your door. So when the destroyer came through, it destroyed all the firstborn born in Egypt. And the Egyptians did not have the blood on the door, so they were not safe. But now everybody who belonged to God, the Israelite communities who obeyed the order, their firstborn was safe. There was a great cry in the land because now all of a sudden when a destroyer came through, it touched the lives of everyone who did not have the blood on the door. Thanks be to God that he made a provision to save some. So if there was blood on your door, you were completely saved. Amen. That's a wonderful thing to have the past death angel pass over you, the destroyer pass over your homes. And some of us, even in this climate, this virus will pass over your home and not come nigh you. And some it will touch. But thanks be to God, he gave provision in those days to keep you safe by the blood of a lamb. In this climate now, we no longer have an ark, amen, it's no longer threatening to rain for 40 days and 40 nights, and we no longer have to put the lamb's blood on our door, but where can we go to be safe? In this climate, we're not safe to come to church because we can only gather in 10 people or, or less. And, and even our favorite grocery store, we have to stay a small distance. We can only let a certain amount of people in at a certain amount of time. And still in that, you don't feel 100% safe. So where can we go to feel safe? Where, where can we go even when shelter in place is not enough and coughing and, and being, taking all the provisions are not enough? Where can we go to feel safe? We turn to Psalm 91 and we find our answer. He or she who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. He or she that dwells in the shelter and the, the secret place is safe. He loves, he or she loves to be alone with God, to commune with God, and to, to be with God. It's nothing like being in God's presence. If, if you're out there and you, you've never experienced God's presence, I pray that one day you do because there is liberty in his presence. There's freedom in his presence. There's, there's joy in his presence. There's peace in his presence. There's joy beyond compare in his presence. It's not happiness, because happiness is based on happenings. But when nothing is happening, you are not happy. But joy supersedes whatever is going on inside. Joy is deep inside of you. You will be rejoicing regardless, because you're in the presence of Almighty God. Shadow of the Almighty means he shadows you under his wings, and it means that the individual who has inward worship it shows up on the outside, and I would not have a religion that was inside that did not come out every now and then. And, and now the one who enjoys conversing with God and talking with God, and it's nothing like being with God, they are in the secret place. And in this secret place, there is rest. Rest is an awesome thing. It's an important thing because rest means there's no trials, there's no, there's no beating against you, there's no difficulty, but it's a time that spares you of difficulty. It's, it's rest. And not only that, under this shelter, he protects them from harm. And then the psalmist says here, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Psalm states here that the Lord is, he is the refuge and fortress. When trouble comes, we need a refuge, amen? We need a refuge, a place where we can go and hide and be safe. The, the fortress is when the enemy is raging, and you know the enemy is always raging, except for when God tells us that, that the enemy is time for him to leave us alone so we can have some rest. But if the enemy had his way, he would always be trying to beat at us and, and to conquer us and to create difficulty in our lives. But it's great to have a fortress. A fortress, if you will, is a brick wall, it's a tall wall, it's a place where the enemy can't get to because you are protected behind the fortress. And how many of you know God is a mighty fortress? 
He is a mighty fortress. He's a shelter in the time of storm. But not only that, when it's war time, he will keep you safe because he is a fortress. Not only that is he a fortress, but we can trust in him. I know we trust in chariots, and back then you trust in your job, you trust in your family, you trust in your friends, and everything will let you down at one point or another. But it's great to know that you can trust in God. God is, always will be. He never will cease to be in existence. He never slumbers, nor does he sleep. God is our fortress. And not only that, we can trust in him because he will never leave us nor forsake us or turn his back on us. Ha, verse number three. I'm getting excited right in here, Brother Raymond. Uh, surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. Interestingly enough here, it's word that he, he, it almost says surely. I like surely because surely is a guarantee. Surely he will do it. Surely he won't fail. Surely you can put your trust in him because he will not fail. It's a guarantee when he says surely. Surely he will save you from the fowler's, uh, fowler's snare uh, and from the deadly pestilence. When he says, surely, I guarantee I will save you from these things. Yes. Now, the fowler's snare is interesting because the fowler's snare uh, for a bird or for an animal is an unnoticed trap. And as we walk along this work journey called life, there are some unnoticed traps in which we can fall in. There's some things we don't really notice or we didn't really pay attention to that will grab hold of us and cause us to fall. Imagine, if you will, if you were walking along and under some leaves, there was a bear trap it designed to catch the bear around the foot. Amen? And once it catches the bear around the foot, the bear is then trapped. Well, guess what? God will save us if we get trapped by the enemy and all the things that the enemy set forth to catch us in God will set us free from and save us the enemy wants to set traps for you but God will identify the traps and in the ones you may fall into he will still save you from the fowler snare and the traps also the deadly pestilence and I looked up deadly pest pestilence and it has an interesting definition pestilence is deadly or virulent epidemic disease it is an epidemic disease. It's regarded as something that is harmful and destructive. Well, COVID-19 is harmful and destructive, but God can save you from it. Amen. God can save you from the pestilence that is going throughout not just our land, but every country in the world has some degree of the cases of this COVID-19. Some more than others, but it's spreading so rapidly in our country, but God can save you from the pestilence. Now I hear you saying to me, Pastor, I know you mean well, you sound well, and all that's good, but I hear some Christians are getting the disease. I hear Christians are coming down with the virus, and I, pastors, and there was a bishop, a pastor, and an elder who all went to the same funeral service, and all of them have died due to the disease. And you're saying to yourself, well, Pastor, you said that uh, he will save us from the fowler's snare and the deadly pestilence. But these individuals fell prey to the virus, and they, they died uh, to complications as a result. Now, the safe place that we're talking about is not a physical place. It's a spiritual place. It's not a physical place where you can go and run and hide, but it's a spiritual place where your soul will be saved even though your body is defected by a disease. Even though you may be compromised in your body, your soul is safe with God. Even though you may have to go through complications and be in ICU and even be on a ventilator, God will still save your soul. You don't have to worry about this because this spiritual place will never suffer harm. This spiritual place, God will keep your soul 100% safe. And you ask me, Pastor, well, how do I get to this secret place? Well, I'm glad you asked me because the only way through the secret place is through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and he will keep you in the secret place. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to belief and trust in him, to surrendering your life to Jesus Christ. And this day, even in your homes, even in your viewing audience, if you're watching on your back porch, on your cell phone, 
this secret place where you're safe from the snout, this foul or snare, and safe from the deadly pestilence is in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, died on the cross for our sins. He was a perfect sacrifice. He was the lamb's blood on the door. He was the ark where the family was safe. And even though there's no physical ark, and we don't have to put blood on our doors, the blood of Jesus will cover you when you give your heart and your life to him. So today, if you're in the viewing audience, and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you say, Pastor, I want to get to that secret place, that safe place, the safest place to be. The safest place to be is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It doesn't guarantee any physical safety all the time. But for all of eternity, your soul will be safe. You will not have to endure the wrath of God and all the things that people will have to endure. Because your soul, your very soul, will be saved. The body is, is only temporary. The United States of America is temporary. Life on this earth is temporary, but life eternal is permanent. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and get that great eternal life. And you can be in the safest place to be. You may be sheltered in place now, but it's great that on judgment day you can be sheltered in place in heaven forevermore. That you can be safe at home with God through his son Jesus Christ. Accept him today. And enter into the safest place to be. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord is good regardless of what's going on in the world today. The song I'm going to sing is called It's Not Over Now. And I hope it encourages everybody out there that's watching, even people in, the, in this house right now. It's not over now. This is not the end. You've been tossed and beaten up. You've fallen again. I know your heart's been torn. You say there's no point. In carry on The race is not over It's not over now You're looked upon like the scum of society yet they close their eyes to the strength of your pain to be weighed by events or accomplishments to be found lacking yet it's to your shame to be forgotten like the wind of yesterday Neglected, beaten and worn The pain that you're feeling is just as real As the ground you're standing on It's not over now This is not the end No, no, no You've been tossed and beaten up 
you fall on again I know your heart's been torn You say there's no point in carrying on The pain is not over it's not over now you gotta hold on and don't you give up my sister hold on hold on Because it's not over, oh, it's not over now. Amen. Thank you for joining us on today. We're so very glad to come to you on Facebook Live. And Lord willing, we'll be here next week uh, with another message to encourage you at this time. God bless you and enjoy the rest of your day. cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Singing glory to his name. Come on, help me sing the singing. from sin Jesus so sweetly abides within there at the cross where he took me in with singing glory to his name I'm singing glory to his name precious name glory to his name precious name that to my heart Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Singing glory to his name. Come on, y'all. Let's have some fun with it. Let's sing. Glory to his name. Precious name. Glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name. Oh, I'm singing glory to his name. Precious name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of blood. Glory to his name.